Well, it seems a lot of my videos lately want a bit of an introduction and this one is no exception to that. So in this video, I'm going to repair something which is not complete. It's a circuit board off something. Now, this video will show you because I'm doing this out loud the way I think when I'm approaching these sort of faults. It doesn't necessarily mean that A, it's the quickest way of doing the job, okay, and it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm always getting it right. So when you watch this, and you may see me going down not exactly blind alleys, or yes, maybe blind alleys, you'll maybe see me thinking, oh, this must be this, and then a little bit later, I figure out, no, that isn't right, and I have another look and said, oh, it's because it's that. So this is the way I think, this is the way I work, and that's what I'm showing you here, guys. I will tell you at the end, I do actually come to what the fault is. It's not an overly long video. So please, guys, comment. I love you guys to comment, but do watch the video through so you can see the whole process I went through. If you don't want to see the whole process, yeah, skip to the end. But in that case, well, A, I think you're not going to learn very much. That's the first thing, yeah. You just want somebody to tell you what the problem is. What I'm trying to do is to teach you how to find out what the problem is yourself. Okay, guys, let's get on with it. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, guys. Welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a package here. It's from uh, Dan. He's a subscriber, not a million miles away from me. He's on the island of Lanzarote, so not too far from Gran Canaria, yeah. I know what's in here, so I'll tell you what it is. As I understand it, Dan has a business supplying audio equipment, and this is an amplifier. But not a standalone amplifier or a home amplifier. This is from a powered speaker. So this is the amplifier, or most likely by amp, that fits into the back of the powered speaker. He says it's completely dead. So I asked him just to send me the amplifier panel basically due to the weight of the postage so if we can just get inside here well packed here we have one amplifier panel in here yeah so here it is let's have a look Dan was saying he struggles to find anybody on Lanzarote Island who can repair these things I said I'll try my best. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we'll see. Here it is. RCF, so ART708A. This is the actual amplified speaker it came from. Usually these are bi amp, so they have two amplifiers in here one for the subwoofer or woofer, shall we say, and the other one for the tweeter. So that's what you would normally find in these. However, this one has just one volume control, so I'm not sure whether that would be the case. They would usually have two volume controls for high and low frequencies. Okay, we'll see. This, I'm sure, is a Class D amplifier. I can tell that really by the amount of shielding on it and the fact there's no heavy heat sinks on it. So quite often, if it is a bi-amp, you'll have a class D amplifier for the bass speaker and then a normal linear class AB type amplifier for the horn. Okay, I think we can see inside here some uh, power devices they look like they're actually some uh, transformer in here. So I think the first thing we'll do is open this up and make some basic checks on this. And the first one, well, is the fuse any good? I could check the fuse itself but probably if I just go into ohms range and I connect across the live and neutral, and bear in mind this is off at the moment, it will probably read open. And if I switch it on, I should read something. And it reads open, so switch on or switch off, doesn't make any difference. Okay. Let's make sure the meter's working, yeah, the meter's working. And that's on ohms range, so that would show mega ohms. Okay, so interesting. So I'll get this fuse. Bit awkward to get this one out. There's a knack to doing this, and I don't have the knack, is that what it is? <laughs> yeah, maybe. 
Yeah. Bit of force. Okay, so it kind of lifts out like that. So usually there's a spare fuse in that square slot there. And the fuse looks like it's blown. Let's have a look. So the spare fuse is missing. This fuse is definitely blown. That's why the effect is really an open circuit because there is no circuit. It is open. That's the opening in there, yeah. So I suspect that somebody's taken the spare fuse already and put that in and it blew again. That suggests there's a short circuit somewhere, okay? Let's see if we can find it. I certainly wouldn't just replace the fuse and try it again. I mean, that is blown for a reason, okay? So we need to get inside this thing. Let's have a look. Well, it appears to be held on by six screws and then maybe just slots it. I'm not totally sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll take those screws out and see what happens. Okay, yeah, it comes off. Oh, has this been used somewhere wet? There's no heat sink pads or anything on the back of here, so what's all this? Huh? This, this looks like it's been used outdoors to me. There won't be any high voltages in this. I mean, this thing's been in the post. Of course, you can just prove that before I start poking around, I guess. There's a couple of uh, large capacitors here. I don't see any others. Oh, yeah, there's one down there. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so this will be the large capacitor on the mains. These will probably be on the secondary side because in between... We see the transformer. So in fact, there's one. Yeah, there are two of those large capacitors. I don't know if you can just see at this angle. Yeah, you can probably see better at this angle. So there's two of these. So let's have a look across these to see if there's any voltage. As I say, you wouldn't expect there to be any because, hey, there's a short. That's one good reason why you wouldn't expect there to be any. And two, because it's probably been in the poster for about a week. Okay, let's have a look. Volts. It's where you wouldn't expect there to be any, is the time that it gets you, okay? No voltage there. No voltage there. What's the resistance? Across the pair. High. Are these two connected together? Yes, it looks like we have two capacitors in series here. Okay. Those ends are not connected together, so yeah, it looks like they're in a series. But I didn't see any short. Okay, so where's the short? Well, power comes in here live and neutral, okay? Do we see a short live neutral? No, we don't. 500 kilo ohms or so. How about to earth, to ground? No. No. So we don't see any shorts on the input. So that's going to go to a bridge rectifier. I'm just looking from this side first. Okay, so. We can see it goes through inductor, looks like capacitors, capacitors large, filter capacitors basically, filter inductors, then this side, there's like a thermistor or something in here, VDR, something like that. We can see the large capacitors, so the bridge rectifier must be here. Yeah, you can see these four pins here. One, two, three and spaced four. So you can see I've figured out where that is guys without actually even opening this up. Is that just luck or is it a bit of experience? Yeah. Comment. So let's see. 
If this is the bridge rectifier, chances are, well, I say chances are, these two are the AC input. And if it is, these will read the same as I was reading across live and neutral. Yeah. But 460, 460k. So that we know is the live and neutral. So this is your positive and negative. This one is likely to be the positive end just because of the way they spaced out. And because I didn't see a short on these capacitors, which seem to be in series, I don't expect to see a short here either. And it's reading well into the killer ohms, okay. Then it seems to go through two, what are these resistors? 220. These are 22k resistors. Yeah, 21.9. 21.9. They might be across the capacitors, but we'll see. No, it doesn't read the same. Okay. So we have that, and then that goes into the main power supply part of this, yeah, which looks like these. Because there's no shorts across these capacitors, I don't expect to see a short across these either. Let's have a look. So this looks like this looks like it should be the gate, drain source or source drain gate, but then the drain source. So we can have a look. No, 4.3 mega ohms, high. That's also high. No, 4.1 meg. So I don't seem to see any short circuits on the input side of this. Okay. I can see underneath here, this is the switch mode transformer. So these things underneath the transformer, that's the opto isolator. Okay. These things, I wouldn't be surprised if these are uh, rectifier diodes. I can look up the part, or it may use MOSFETs as diodes, synchronous rectification. So we'll quick look around these, see if we can see any shorts here. So that reads short. That doesn't. That reads short. Do they all read short? Yeah. Okay, and then from here to here. Let's put it into diode mode. <coughs> I'm thinking, but I'm only thinking that these are probably diodes and or double diodes and these are connected across the winding, which is why I see a short. And possibly if we go across here, we'll see a diode junction. Yeah. Well, actually, that reads a bit strange, that one. That reads like a diode junction. That means the strange reading. Diode junction. This is almost like a bridge rectifier. Again, but I don't think it is a bridge. Yeah, that strange reading. Diode junction. Strange reading. Ah. No. I thought it read short, but it doesn't. I was probably just touching something else. Okay. So, let's have a look to see what these components are, but I don't think they're 40, so VNN51 on semiconductor. Okay, let's look at the data sheet for those and see what they actually are. Okay, so VNN51 data sheet, well, on semiconductor, well, that's uh, low supply current three pin microprocessor reset thing or something. That's something with more pins on. Uh, no, that's the uh, reset monitor. So, no. Uh, 
there seems to keep bringing me back to this. Maybe that isn't actually the port number, because I'm sure that's not what these things actually are. Doesn't make sense, really, to me, at least. No, and it's the wrong pin out anyway. I knew it wasn't that though, it just didn't make sense. Some of the part numbers on these. 620TG is on all of them. Let's look for that. Ah. Much more like it. Yeah. It's a rectifier diode. The diodes. We can see the package there. And you can see there's two diodes in and then the output is on the tab. So these would read short between these two pins. You'd expect them to do that. I'll just show you why. So what you often find in the power supplies is you'll have the switch mode primary driven by transistors. Now this has two transistors driving it by the loops of it. those two it also has two high voltage capacitors that appear to be in series so we can pretty much say this is likely to be a half bridge circuit or half bridge llc i made videos about these all you need to know about power supplies i'll link the one if i can find the one i made about this oh yeah the video why does atx power supplies have two capacitors that explain this circuit so basically you'll have the transistors driving either side of the primary let me show you so what you generally have is something like this you'll have uh, mosfets or transistors they may well be mosfets could be either really so one like so gate and then the other end goes down to hot ground basically so this is your hot ground this is your ht about 320 volts so your large capacitors actually fit here in series okay your bridge rectifier is connected across here this is your bridge plus minus the AC terminals on this bridge go to your live and neutral okay live neutral to those filters so you'll have something like this you'll have a controller switching these and it switches them alternately so basically it connects this end of the primary first to 320 volts then this switches off this is switching on it goes down to zero this switch is off, this switch is on, it goes back to 320. So you get on this end of the transformer, square wave pulses, high frequency, 320 volts high. Okay. The other end of the transformer winding will go either directly to here or it will go via another inductor and a high voltage capacitor to here. Okay like so so with these components this is called an llc type power supply and without them it's called a half bridge bridge sorry guys bridge okay and the llc thing by the way it makes this square wave more like a side wave but that's what it does improves efficiency so anyway Coming off here, we can have a number of secondaries. I'll just draw one of them. We probably have maybe four, uh, which gives me some idea about this type of amplifier maybe, but we'll have here on its secondary, like this, and we'll have a center tap. Okay, so the center tap goes down to safety ground, you know, isolated from the mains by the transformer okay and here we have those double diode packages we were just looking at so 
You could have one like this, the two diodes. This is the center pin, so this is like pin four. This was the pins with the one and three, I think it called them. Yeah, one and three. So you have pin one, pin three. And what happens is, due to the square wave driving here, this end of the coil is at roughly 160 volts between these two capacitors. You'll have down here, by the way, a couple of uh, high value resistors to balance the voltage. That could be those 22K we were looking at, but they're usually higher than that. Unless they were 220K and I didn't read them properly. <laughs> yeah. So this end of the transformer has 160 on, and this end is going between zero and 320. So effectively, your square wave is centered at 160 volts, which gives an alternating current. So as this is switching, this is also pulsing. So this end goes positive, and then afterwards, the other end goes positive, and then this end goes positive again, and then the other end goes positive again. And these conduct alternately, and there is your out. Okay, capacitor. Ground. So that's the sort of thing you'll have. And if that's giving you a positive supply, you could also have another secondary, by the way. With different devices, because these are not that way, but you could have. And this would have diodes mounted that way. Yeah. Negative end of the capacitor. And this would give you a negative supply. Okay. Our devices are all this type, so I'm pretty sure we have four positive voltage rails here, or we may have more of one of these in parallel. Um, I can just check that actually on the diodes now. So that's the sort of thing we have. But the reason I started this, I said these two pins between one and three will read short. What you're actually reading is the resistance of this winding, which is extremely low. It might not be short, but it'll be very, very low. That's why the meter's saying on continuity mode, it's a short, okay? So back to this. I'm pretty confident I have four output voltages here. They may be in parallel. So if we go, this is the output of one of the rails. Does it connect to any other ones? No, it doesn't connect to that. Doesn't connect to that one. It connects to that one. So those two are together. So it looks like you've probably got two windings both feeding into the same point, which is here, a voltage rail, okay. Are the other two connected together? Wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, they are connected together, but they're not shorted to each other, okay? So these two diodes are on one voltage rail, these two are another voltage rail. They're both positive voltage rails because of this type of diode, they can't be connected. Well, I suppose they could, but I can't see as they would connect them the other way because otherwise we'd see a short. Oh, interesting, okay. Because if they were connected up to a round, we'd see a short between these. Short. So I don't think we have a short in either of the voltage rails. Okay. No, it doesn't look like it. So that then feeds, oh, Luke is saying here, low plus low minus, high plus high minus, actually speaker connector. So these two voltage rails will be driving into this part of the circuit. So these one, two, and these one, two, 
mobile output transistors. Okay, let's look for some shorts around this lot. So, what do we have? This is going to be the base or the gate. I'm on the uh, diode mode, so I don't see a semiconductor junction. It could be a gate, these could be MOSFETs, probably are MOSFETs. Uh, yeah, it looks like a parasitic diode between the source and the drain with the positive to the source, and then high. That's what you'd expect. So. We can say this is going to be the drain and this will be like the positive supply. This will be the negative end, if you like, or the ground end. So if we go in the direction positive towards ground, we read like a high resistance climbing up. That's climbing a bit, yeah. Go the other way and we should see a parasitic diode junction. There, that's a MOSFET. Is this one the same? Let's have a look. Parasitic diode. Climbing up, which only climbs to about two volts or so. That doesn't seem to be right. I'd expect this to be very high resistance, actually. In that polarity. Yeah. Oh, it's gone up now. Maybe it's a capacitor charging somewhere. Let's go again on this one. That's lower. So these are not in parallel, I don't think. Let's have a look. Those don't connect to each other, which made me think probably isn't ground. Those don't connect to each other. How about the ones on the other side? We might have some complementary devices here. I haven't looked, guys, you can see. I'm just looking around this and trying to make my own mind up. Okay, so IR devices, certainly MOSFETs. Okay, what do we have? Well, those two points are connected together. Okay, which you would think it would be ground. And on these ones, not connected together okay so that connects to and on and on these ones not connected together so i'm sure i'm seeing some sort of short now in here so we do need to take this apart apart from cleaning it we need to have a look to see what's going on here i think we have some sort of short somewhere yeah. Let's take this off. Oh, let me just check something though. Is this point connected from here to the middle of this one? I think it might be. Yes, it does. So I do think we've got a short. I think what it is, these two, when I'm on the center pin, this is your positive supply, I would say. And this one, when I'm on the end, and bear in mind that one's mounted the opposite way around. This is your negative supply. Effectively, that's what I think I'm seeing here. Then the positive of this one, so to the negative of that one. Yeah, so they're in series with each other. And the same with here, from here to here. That doesn't read the same. But that doesn't read the same. Okay, I've now come to the end of the thinkings on that. I will open this up and have a look to see what these devices are. Okay, now I've opened it up. I can see a bit more, so I'm not quite guessing so much. But I can see now actually what I have here. And it isn't quite what it looked like, but it is quite what it looked like actually. So what we've got is, you can see, 
These are your capacitors on the secondary side. This is the output side of the power supply. These are your switching transistors, your input. And you can see that we have negative, positive, negative, positive. So these two are connected in series. And we can see that if we just look at them. So if we go across the two capacitors, that means like a diode junction, which is a positive. Well, this is the negative end. So let's go the other way. So this is the way the voltage would normally be, negative to positive. And that reads something. I'd expect that to read open circuit in this polarity because this end is the positive end. And if that's saying two volts, that means effectively this can't go above two volts. Some diode or semiconductor will switch on. That tells me there's some problem on this output end. But I can see what this lot is. And I can see there isn't a problem here. So the junction of the two capacitors, that's here and here, this you would expect is connected together. Yeah. And this is your ground, the junction between the two in naught volts, okay? The positive end here will come from two of these diodes. Now, we know that this is the cathode end, the tap, so which two? Well, here, that one and that one. So these double diodes are actually acting in parallel. There's probably two different secondaries, actually. It's just to get more current. And that, these two points in here, this is your positive supply. Okay? So if that's the case, if we put the red lead on the input to these diodes, we'll see a diode junction. Yeah? This end being the cathode, that's what you'd expect. Well, these two ends will appear to be shorted. That is the two ends of the winding. So what we actually have here, we have that. But we don't have this going to ground. We have this capacitor going to the other capacitor. And this will be your negative rail. And the junction here, this will be ground. So that's your push supply. This plate will be ground, the junction. So in that case, this should go to the other two diodes, but not the cathode, the anode, like I've drawn there, yeah? Let's have a look. And that will tell us if we're right now. So, negative end of the capacitors is here. And then we have the other two diodes. So, the anodes are here. Yes, that connects exactly where you'd expect it to connect. Negative rail. And they're all in parallel, the two, two pairs of diodes. So those are your anodes. Okay, and then the cathodes should conduct this way. Let's have a look. Yeah, so with the negative on so with the negative on here, it goes to the capacitor, the negative rail with the negative on here. Also goes to the capacitor, yeah. And across the two, well it'll just be like a short. Because that's this circuit. So we have that, and it's going to here. That's our circuit, yeah, that's our circuit. Negative, and this is your positive, okay? And this is your ground. And that's what it looks like on the multimeter. So you can see, I hope, that there isn't a short. How is it just slightly more complicated? Because we don't have a single diode in each of these positions. We actually have a pair of diodes in each of these positions. Yeah. Like so. And then. Like so. Okay. And that'll just give more current. So that's what we have, and I can see now that there isn't a short in this, and they read okay, although there are shorts if you know what I mean. Okay, so the problem we think is further down here. This is a bridge, effectively. This is a class D amplifier. So this acts as a bridge. I'll just draw this as well, and then we can have a look around it, okay? So the way you would expect this circuit to be is you'd have the push supply, okay? That's the 
positive end of these capacitors, whatever voltage it is. We have the plus supply, and coming from here, we would have MOSFET, another MOSFET. This is your negative supply. So, plus being this end of this capacitor, minus being that end of the capacitor, they're in series, remember? Okay, they're effectively in, they are in series, never mind effectively. They are actually in series, like so. Okay. And those will be two of these devices. Yeah, whichever two we'll find out in a minute. And then we have the same thing again. So we would have something like that. These are your gates. Plus, it's the same plus, it's the same voltage, yeah. And then here we've got these big inductors and looks like some resistors in there. So you'd effectively have your inductor, your inductor from here. And you'd have here your speaker. Okay. Now, I don't have the speaker enclosure, so I don't know. But it looks like the four speaker connectors are here. Yeah, and they're not in parallel like that. Let's have a look. So the two minuses, high minus and low minus, are connected together. Are these connected together? No. If they were, that means that this drives both horn and the woofer, and we've got a passive crossover in the speaker, but they don't. So we need to modify this. This is what's called a, a bridge class D. The way it works, by the way, is this transistor turns on and this transistor turns on to put the full positive voltage across the speaker in that direction. And then on the other half cycle, this one and this one turns on. Yeah, that way. So effectively, you're alternating either end of the speaker. But because I can see here the speakers are not wired like that. We must have something else. What have we got? Well, I suspect what we've got is this. But I'll probably have to draw this again. Now, let me put a sticker on it. Okay. So, the same thing, but this inductor is driving one of your speakers. Base or treble, yeah. This inductor is driving the other of your speakers. Okay. And then the other end of both speakers is connected to ground. And that's what we appear to have. Yeah. And we can absolutely verify that if we look at the junction of these two capacitors and it goes to the negative end of both speakers. We know that's the case, really. So let's have a look. So junction of the two capacitors these connected to each other so you go to the minus yes it does it must do really yes it does so we know now basically what the circuit is okay we know what it is and really if you can't either in your mind i would normally do it in my head but in this case to help you guys on paper you should have a good idea of what you've got before you start looking for shorts. Just the same as this. It looked like there was shorts around the diode until we figured out what we had, and then it makes sense. So does this make sense? Let's have a look. And what I'm looking for is short circuits, yeah? So first of all, this would suggest that these pairs are in series. Maybe this one and this one, and probably that one and that one in series. If that's the case, then the drain of one should go to the source of the other, whichever is a drain and source, okay? So either that should connect to that, okay? Or this should connect to this. I don't know the pinout for the device. I could go and look it up. But let's see. So we have drain, drain. This should read open. It reads like a resistance, yeah? Drain source. Oh, and it's reading short. Drain source. That one reads okay. 
So this one is short. And then this will go to probably drain of one of the other ones. Yeah, source of that one. So I'm guessing this is drain. She goes to the source of that one. That's drain. Let's look at the other side. So that's, in fact, which amplifier is this? Is this the base amplifier? Let's go from one of the two that are connected to the other one. Those are connected to there. That goes to the positive end of one of the speakers. I expect it will. Yeah, woofer. Yeah. So this is the woofer amplifier. And we have a short device here. This one, well, the same thing. So because this one probably isn't short, I can show you how it should read. So I'm guessing drain. Source doesn't read short. Okay. Drain source doesn't read short. Now, drain of one to source of the other. No. So drain of this one to source of that one. Yes. Okay, and then this will go to the positive of the tweeter. Yes. Okay. So the fault with this is a faulty transistor here, this one. If you were having problems following that, watch it again. Yeah. If you still have problems following that, let me know because I really want to teach you guys this. And if it's as clear as mud, I need to do it slower or something, yeah? But the first thing I can say, definitely, I hope you can see, we have a short, and I hope you can see why. Because one of these MOSFETs is short drain source. Let's look at the pinout and figure out which one. So the devices are all the same, IRFB4019, and the other ones, same, yeah? Let's get the pin out and let's have a look to see which is drain and which is source. Yeah, so it shows you a pin out and doesn't tell you which pin's which. Maybe I'm just missing it. Okay. Yeah, it's not actually telling me which is which. Maybe it's in here somewhere. Oh, it tells me here. But we could easily work it out, I'll show you. So pin one, two, three, and pin two is drain, it says there, okay? So pin two, the middle one, is drain. If you wanted to work it out without a component analyzer, which of course you could use, but in circuit. So you can see I mentioned it before, this is this parasitic diode inside the package, okay? They don't fit this diode, it's just part of the construction of a MOSFET. So if we put the positive on the source, which is the end pin, we know. But even if we didn't know, we just put the positive on either source or drain, negative on drain or source. And if we see the diode, we've got the right way around. So in our case, because we know source drain, you'd expect the positive on here would conduct yeah, and that's the other way you would know because you just try both ways round and whichever one shows the dial junction when the positive on the pin, the pin the positive lead on is the source. Let's try it. And I'll do it on these ones because they're not short. Okay, so. If we think this is the source, positive here, and we think this is a drain, if we see a diode junction, 0.505, we are correct. We go the other way, we think this is the source drain, and you don't see a diode junction, okay? So that tells us what the data sheet told us. Okay, I don't have any of these diodes in. I will give the guy a shout and tell him we have a short circuit one. Because it's just short across here, basically, and we don't have a short to the gate, I don't think we'll have anything else blown. I mean, we could have. The problem is, of course, most of it's underneath all this gunk. There, yeah. If anything is going to be blown, it's probably these resistors. I mean, I can't see it. This is all horrible stuff. It really is not nice to work with. We want two resistors there. Let's see if I can figure out where they are. I don't know what value they are, but you'd expect them both to be the same, but they may not be. 
Hoe mooi zie je? Well, they both read the same. I'll say that they both read the same, and we know one of the amplifiers is fine. Uh, maybe not even resist. I can't see the things. Okay, so Dan, I'm sure you're watching this. We need to get some uh, MOSFETs for this. I'll give you a price for the repair and let me know if you want me to continue. I think, as I explained, there's probably nothing else wrong here, but it could be. You never know until you replace the thing and we find out, yeah? So, possibly a part two coming up if there's something else wrong. If this just fixes it, well, we don't really need a part two, do we, guys? Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to seeing you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.